How good can Tevin Coleman be in the right situation? What receiver might have snuck into the first round with a perfect spark score? And we take a closer look at how the tight ends finished in 2018. We've got a great show for you. Dave Gerzak is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high-stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Hands, everybody. If you got what it takes, because I'm your reps and I'm on the mic. You are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. It's the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for football analysis from the best fantasy players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. With the master rhyme, at the least behind the video rapper, you know the top driver, tapper. Thanks a lot, Rob. Greetings and salutations, all of you Balkaholics and Gerzak and addicts. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by my F. Of course, you are slightly above average host, Eric Balkman, and my co-host is the patron saint of fantasy football, the Dizzle, Dave Gerzak. Coming up on tonight's show, what can you expect from the Cowboys passing game in 2019? We give our initial thoughts on a pair of West Virginia wideouts for dynasty purposes. And Dave and I take a closer look at how the tight ends finished in the FFPC last season. Shout out to the chat room right now. Feel free to post any questions you might have in there. We get a lot of people in there already. However, if you want to connect with us on Twitter, the show is at HSFFR. I am at Eric Balkman. Dave is at David Gerzak. Facebook.com slash HSFFR. Does Facebook have a Twitter account? you think they've they have they must have a twitter account right i don't know and twitter must have a facebook account i would think probably all right i'm I gonna have to look into this rob that's your job for tonight get the get on that aren't on lame facebook lame book as it were Ooh. if you want to chime in and talk with us give us a call 347-426-3682 that's 347 game over high stakes fantasy football at gmail.com is where to send those emails to us if you have any questions for us we'll get to all the chat room questions tweets and emails Fantasy feedback segment later on in the show. Our producer and mutual friend Rob, audio engineer Bryce, working hard tonight. By the way, we're trying to get um, we're trying to get Bryce on to, to co-host while you're gone for an episode. Oh, really? Bryce and Balky. We're gonna call it the Commish Cast. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, and uh, where, where Bryce just complains about you know people. Yeah, people. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's gonna be a very fantasy football centric show. It's gonna be just uh, things in general, pop, pop culture, uh, celebrities, mm. um, people in his everyday life where he just complains about it. So that'll be fun. That's coming up on a week where you will be off, and Bryce and I will co-host. Yeah, We're, we call, we call him Binary Bryce because either it, something's either awesome or it sucks. It's either the best thing in the world or the worst thing in the world, right. and right. there is nothing in the middle. That's right. Pepsi's the best. Coke is the worst. <laughs> and if you think that's wrong, you're wrong. Um, so that is all coming up on the show. A couple other notes I want to bring up uh, before we get started tonight. Uh, for those of you who follow the High Stakes Lowdown on Rotoviz, uh, you notice that there is a new episode this past week from uh, Chris Hart, Toby Bielkini. Of course, you know them as Commando Fro. I believe they were like the third or fourth guests ever on this show and i finally got caught up with them we got them on the high stakes lowdown this past week they won a pair of ffpc 750 dynasty leagues this past season not their first uh, rodeo they have won previous ffpc dynasty leagues there before and they also took 11th place in the ffpc main event this past season a lot of great insight there if you're looking at some uh you know sort of overall dynasty strategy uh, not necessarily. I mean, we did get into the rookies a little bit, but overall dynasty strategy, there's a lot of good stuff on that. Rotoviz.com slash podcast. Also, check it out on the Spreaker channel, uh, the Rotoviz Spreaker channel as well. Uh, there are new dynasty orphans available at myffpc.com. Dave, I think you posted like probably another dozen of them this past week, right? We posted a lot more than that. Uh, they're all, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, we posted and sold a lot. There's, uh, I think there's about 28 to 30 left in that. Okay. Every, all are posted at this point. All right. Fair enough. All, so, the, all the deadbeats. 
their orphans got pulled. Right. Yes. I, had, <laughs> I was trying to move past that, but I'm uh, glad you spelled that out. For I the mean, listeners. the people who didn't respond to the eight reminder emails. We really tried to get them to renew, but you know, sometimes life gets, life in, the gets way. in the way. Yeah, that is a great fantasy team name for a dynasty league, by the way. Um, MyFFPC.com. Check out the orphans, and also starting this Sunday, there are two maiden dynasty startups posted at MyFFPC.com at the 77 level and the $250 level. Um, you can check those out. They start drafting, I think, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, it's a slow draft, so hop in there. At last time I checked, there was three spots left in one and seven in the other. Um, so check, uh, check those out and get signed up for those now. Best ball, super flex, and double ups, obviously all available at myffpc.com right. as well. Okay, now I have the two important notes. Oh, more uh, notes? The Quant Edge Best Ball Podcast, hosted by our good buddy Todd from PA, Todd Burroughs, uh, is uh, he's got a new podcast. Guess who was his first ever guest? Uh, Matthew Berry. No, it was me. Evan Sil- Oh, yeah, you? yeah, no, quite a few notches down from he, those he guys. He asked about a thousand people, and it, he's like, "Oh, is Balky?" Yeah, it was like one thousand one, <laughs> one thousand two on that. So, no, congratulations, Balky. That's great. We literally just got done recording it about an hour ago, and that is going to be out next week. Um, we get into a lot of Antonio Brown stuff on that show, and uh, some really good FFPC stuff on there as nice. well. I will be promoting that as uh, as soon as that is released. And the big news for the week. I know you don't care about this. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour now on Podbean and. That's right, Spotify. We are on Spotify now, yeah, finally. Right? So that is very cool. Yeah, there's a couple other things we what got Pandora? on the coffer. Now, that's, that's the other one. We're in on that, but we haven't been posted on Pandora yet. So <laughs> Pandora and Deezer is the other one we're working Deezer. on. Yeah. Deezer, where do they, I mean, where do they get these? This Deezer's from? not huge in the United States yet. It's big, like, over in Europe, but it's uh, getting All a foothold. All European fans. Yeah. And which we do have some. I've seen the I've seen the statistics where we're getting downloaded and streamed from. But really? Spotify was big that we worked on that for a while. Not anymore today because this is the most boring show ever. It's like six minutes in with all this crap. Could, that's normal. That now we're I know, seven that's minutes. No, that's why no people don't even have to show up until right. seven minutes. And then they would have missed the. They wouldn't be able to download it on Spotify because they wouldn't know that it's available there. Now <laughs> now they know. Good job, Walker. Thanks to Football Guys, Roto World, and Rob for tonight's rundown. Monday morning quarterbacks Albert Breer has reported Antonio Brown wants to be the highest paid receiver in the league now if you uh, were paying attention over the last 24 hours it seemed like Antonio Brown had found a new home in Buffalo but apparently that deal fell through not only because Antonio Brown said he wouldn't go to Buffalo but because they weren't going to give him the contract that he wanted allegedly this happened with another team earlier this past week Brown said he is going to quote play by his rules and apparently making 12 million dollars a year Dave not part of his rules. He's under contract for the next three seasons. Can't imagine any team trading for him is going to give him a new deal. And this reinforces my point. I think he plays in Pittsburgh in 2019. You know, you might be right. I mean, that, that, well, I, I don't know any team that really rips up a contract when it's three years. I know it's two years they do this sometimes, but three years is just, I think, too long. Yeah, how, how, how old is he right now? 31? 30. I 30? Think going on 31. Yeah, so he'll be 31. So, I mean, and Grant, you know, he's the type of player he could probably play to like 35, 36 and be okay, but he's not going to be a difference maker at 36. You know, he's just probably be not kinda... 36, but I, I agree with you. I think he could actually be really impactful at, up until age 35. When you have Pro Bowl players like that, like Larry Fitzgerald, that they, they do have a staying power. They don't necessarily just fall off the, off the cliff. You have the guys like T.O. and, you know, a little bit bigger guys that, that they do have, they kind of fall off a little bit faster, but he, you know, T.O. played for a long time too. He just strikes me as the type of guy, he's so crafty and he's, he's never a dude who's relied on his speed as much as just how, just how athletic he is. You think about the crazy catches that he's made. I feel like he's a student of the game. He's a guy who can find himself uh, open, you know, basically whenever he wants. I said, actually, I said this on, on the Quan Edge podcast and I, the thing that concerns me most, Dave, the flakiness. And I should have, I should have given you credit on that. That's the thing that scares me. What happens if he's playing for a team and they start off one and three or zero oh and four, and he's just like, you know what, I'm going to mail it in, or you know what, I'm going to stop reporting. You know, you know, I, you know I, as much as I rip on him, I, I do think if he goes to a new situation with a winning type team and gets a new contract, so if everything is hunky dory, just right. like he wants it to be, I think he'll be fine. Uh, I, he's he's had a good situation, but I just think the personalities in Pittsburgh just don't work for him, and I I, I think he could be okay. The problem is that that's just not a very likely. Scenario. No, it's yeah, so that, that, that was my next question. I just, I don't see how uh, the, 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 the Kevin Colbert is going to have to make a choice. And I don't know if it's going to come down to this, Dave, but if it comes down to it, 
where literally nobody's offering you anything um, or teams that are offering you something and Antonio Brown is saying, I'm not going to report there. And then you get a con or you get a trade offer from Bill Belichick saying, we're going to give you a second round pick for him. Then what do you do? If that is the best deal that you can get, do you, do you, is it worth moving on? Is it worth taking your L and saying, all right, go to New England. We, we just, we just, you're, you're, you're lost. So, so who, who's taking the loss now? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh or? would be if they, if they're like, ah, oh, we only get a second round. Plus, he goes second to New might England. Be what he, what, that's my piece. But he goes to New England then too, yeah, which I, I know that. you don't want to do. Yeah, they don't. That's probably the case, but uh, I don't know. I, you know, Kern had a nice point in the chat room. He said he's the worst game theorist ever. Destroy your trade value and demand the most. Yeah, I, it's. He, I, who's, who's his agent? agent? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just I, I don't I don't understand how he lets him get away with this. Um, well, maybe because it, his, it's probably his only client that for the agent, and he's like, well, I, I can't piss him maybe off. Brown, and get fired. <laughs> maybe Brown represents himself. He might. Remember when Ray Allen represented himself in the contract yeah, deal? Yeah, I do. Anyway, uh, he should hire Farrell. Farrell would straighten him out. Farrell would. That'd be great. Uh, we'll pitch that to uh, Farrell Elliott uh, right now. See if he can get in with Antonio Brown. Mike Garofalo from the NFL Network says he believes the Philadelphia Eagles, quote, will be players for Tevin Coleman. The best uh, running back out there available in free agency is obviously Le'Veon Bell, but you have three other guys at the uh, next level down, including Coleman, Mark Ingram, and Jay Ajayi, who doesn't sound like the Eagles have any intention of signing. Now, if that does open up the hole in the backfield, you have um, you know Josh Adams there. You have Corey Clement. Tevin Coleman, if he steps in there, Dave, that's probably, I don't want to say it's the best situation for him for fantasy, but it's certainly a good one. That's still not enough to get me excited about drafting him. For me, this, I hope it is Tevin Coleman to the Eagles. because For me, it's the perfect fit. Because I don't, I don't like the way the Eagles use running backs, so I never like to draft any Eagles running backs. Right. I don't like Tevin Coleman. So if two things I don't like go together, it's perfect. I don't have to worry about either of them. And He's off just, your board. It just eliminates both the Eagles and Coleman, of which I would have already eliminated both anyway. It just makes it easier. Tevin Coleman going at the 605 in FFPC best ball drafts right now. His former teammate, Devontae Freeman, who you remember missed basically half the season, two thirds of the season. I can't really remember what it was at this point, but it was a large chunk of it uh, last season. Dave, he's fallen all the way to the 404. Now, with no Coleman in Atlanta, could you get on board with Devontae Freeman at the 404? Or do the age and the, um, the tread on the tires scare you too much to draft him there? Uh, I can get on board with him, actually, yeah. I at the 404? Yeah, I think that's not bad. I, you know, he, it is one of those things where people look at last season as this lost season. Anyone who owned him was still mad. And uh, I didn't own him really anywhere, so I, I think now is the time to buy. Now he's getting cheap. You could start, technically, Dave, you could start off your draft according to FFPC ADP right now. You could go with Devontae Adams in the first, from, to get, Tevin Cole, or to, uh, get um, Devontae Freeman, excuse me. You could start off with Devontae Adams and then go Tyreek Hill in the second and then at the end of the third, you could take somebody like T.Y. Hilton, or well, maybe not Hilton, but you could take like Amari Cooper or Stephon Diggs as your third wideout, and then grab um, Devontae Freeman as your first running back. Not that, a bad way to start a yeah, draft. That seems like a, it's all right. Or substitute instead of Tyree Kill, take Zach Ertz, and you get your tight end taken care of there too, and you get one of the best out there. That's another way to do it. And again, FFPC. Tight end premium, certainly one way to do it. Hard to pass on Tyreek Hill. The, yeah, I know, that's true. Um, Cowboys have exercised Alan Hearns' 2019 option. Now, Executive Vice President Stephen Jones said he, back uh, in February, said he expected Hearns to be on the roster in 2019. He's going to make $5 million this year before he goes to free agency after the 2019 season. We all remember the ankle, the broken ankle that he suffered in the wild card round. But it sounds like Hearns is going to be ready for training camp. Dave, what does this do for the Dallas pass catching core because Witten is back Hearns is back you would expect Gallup to take another step forward Amari Cooper looked great since he was traded to Oakland last year the thing that kind of scares me off all four of these guys this is a run heavy offense so I'm I'm a little bit nervous about drafting any of these guys at their current value your thoughts on any Cowboys pass catchers that you could get on board with of, of the four I mentioned it's a little tough I don't I don't think I am on board with any of the Cowboys pass catchers Maybe Witten really like late because I think he'll be pretty cheap. Uh, Cooper, I don't totally hate or anything like that, but there's other players that I think I'd rather have kind of in that area where he's going. I feel I feel like some of those big games he had last year were fluky, a bunch of long touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Michael Gallup didn't do enough as a rookie for me to really like him. And Alan Hearns, was, as we said when he had that $40 million contract, we laughed at it. We yucked it up about that contract. <laughs> right. We were hopeful. I was hopeful. I'm like, well, if they're going to pay him that much money, maybe they're going to use him. 
And Hearns is what he is. He's just a guy. He's 27 years old. He really hasn't had a huge breakout season. So, and like you said, Elliott is the is really the key to the offense. I do like Dak Prescott. I I think that he is a decent quarterback, and he's he's always undervalued. And he puts up good running stats too. Yeah, he's got a soup. He's got a high floor. He's not as he's just not as fun as only like Deshaun Watson, you know, but you don't have to trade, take him early. You can take him pretty late. Just kind of looking at the ADP right here, Amari Cooper going at the 309 in FFPC drafts right now. Now, right after him goes Stephon Diggs and AJ Green. I can see how you get on board with either of those guys. I don't know about AJ Green. I mean, he's getting up there and he's had a lot of injury issues over the last couple of years, but then to me that there's a little bit of a cliff there or a little bit of a plateau. And then you get down to the Brandon Cook's Kenny Galladay, Robert Woods, Julian Edelman level, and I'm not sure if I'd be on board with those guys over Cooper. I guess you can lump Cooper in there to, to a certain extent. Um, Jason Witten, as you just mentioned, a guy that you can get on board with late, currently going at the 1704, so you can get him really late. Dallas really doesn't have much else going for them at the tight end position. I'm, you know... <sighs> I drafted Michael Gallup in a couple of dynasties last year, hoping that there'd be something there. I don't know if there is, and I'm not on board with Hearns whatsoever, quite frankly. Uh, Let's move on to Florida and talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars, who just released Carlos Hyde today. Now, Dave Caldwell, who is the general manager of Jacksonville, said that Carlos Hyde, uh, he was looking to move him. Obviously, nobody wants to sign, or excuse me, nobody wants to trade for a 29-year-old running back who's quite frankly, been non-plussing fantasy owners the last two years. The Jacksonville Jaguars gave up a fifth-round pick last season to the Cleveland to get uh, Carlos Hyde. He uh, then averaged 3.26 yards per carry and exactly as many touchdowns as Dave and I scored last year. That's right, a zero. This saves $4.7 million in cap space for the Jags. What does it do for Leonard Fournette? Are you liking him any better now that Carlos Hyde is gone, Dave? I mean, I don't think you and I are liking Carlos Hyde if he even ends up anywhere. I mean, he's a 29-year-old running back. But as far as the Fournette angle goes, um, you and I don't really I, – I don't want to speak for you – I'm not really a fan of Fournette uh, going forward. I guess I like him marginally better right now, but this news doesn't do much for me to like vault Fournette up into the early second round. Where's Fournette going right now approximately? Uh, I will look it up right now. He is going at, oh, uh, 308. Wow. 308. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a One lot spot ahead of Mari Cooper. He's a lot cheaper than he used to be. Uh, the, the team is not great. Quarterback's you know, situation is not fantastic. Well, is it if, if they get fulls? Well, I guess we'll see. I guess it doesn't, that doesn't make it fantastic, if, but if, it's if, better. Yeah, it would be definitely better. I kind of, I might be a buyer of Fournette. He's, again, getting cheap now. He was a super highly touted prospect, kind of like Der- I kind of like him and Derrick Henry. I like both of those players because they're getting inexpensive, and they're highly talented players. So if things go right for a team like the Jaguars, if they actually go 7-9, and nine, Fournette could have a really great season. That is true, and Henry is going at the 309 in drafts right now. So one spot ahead of, or excuse me, one spot behind Fournette. Yeah, similar. You know, don't you like Kerryon Johnson too? Yeah, well, I mean, with, with the, the team is going to run the ball 800 times against right. everyone I talk to. And he's going at the 307. So that's... that's I would probably prefer Kerryon Johnson but, a little bit. I have to say this, the 310, another Dave Gerzak guy this year, Aaron Jones. So yeah. you have this glut of four great running backs that, well, not great we'll, running we'll backs. See if they're great or not. That's four running backs about. that you like at the end of the third round. But maybe you start receiver, receiver, and then go running back at the end of the third in a lot of your drafts this year. I mean, we'll see. It'll change. But Who knows? Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting stuff there from uh, Leonard Fournette and the other running backs. Running backs pretty deep. Uh, it seems that way. Uh, let's get into this Kyler Murray thing. Now, we don't need to talk about this a whole lot because I think there's plenty of other shows that, that get, get into this. Go ahead. Can I interrupt you? Yes. Uh, did you see uh, – Lance Service tweet about uh, <laughs> about what who Kyler Murray what reminds him of uh, Tweety Bird, yeah. <laughs> that was so hilarious. Yeah, and, and it, it was like a, it really was funny. It's just Tweety Bird has this crabby face, and so does Murray. It's just such a funny yeah association. Uh, I, I thought that was one of the funniest tweets uh, at, at Sports Betting Man. Can can I uh, share a piece of trivia with you? Sure, go for it. Uh, Tweety Bird actually taller than Kyler Murray. I, not That's a lot. Actually, of, kind of funny. not a lot of people know that, but not, not uh, the worst radio joke that, ever. That, thank you. That is uh, that's actually not a joke. It's true. Um, but this, 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 so Charlie Casserly, who former um, GM of the Texans, now with the NFL, the, is he with the NFL Network now? I think he is. I think he's taking uh, payola. He's taking bribes from people to try and you know tank Murray's stock here. Uh, Casserly, who Bill Belichick once called the most wrong man in football. 
uh, said that Murray has a lack of leadership, study habits, and uh, did not impress anybody on the whiteboard at the Combine. Now, Gil Brandt, who works for NFL.com, uh, he, didn't, I don't, he said it, quote, sounds fabricated, this report. Um, according to Gil Brandt, only one team had Kyler Murray even work a whiteboard. Uh, Gil Brandt also says he's known Murray since he was a sophomore in high school and that if there were any leadership uh, concerns, if there were any study habit concerns, uh, this would be news to him. Uh, Casserly's report, uh, it, it seems like it, it, like you said, Dave, he, he might be on the take with an NFL team hoping that Kyler Murray falls. Cliff Kingsbury, again, we, we're, we're talking about you don't know what to believe right now, but Cliff Kingsbury, uh, it's, it's been known and reported that it's a done deal that Arizona's taking Murray with the first overall pick, which, again, could be a smokescreen. We don't know. But getting into the Kyler Murray aspect as far as fantasy goes, is he the type of player, if he does go one overall, I mean, he's probably going to be a top 10 pick, right? You agree yeah, with that? Yeah, I think okay. so. All right. So if he goes in that area, is he the type of player that you would look at drafting in the mid-second round, or is that too high for Kyler Murray? I don't think it's too high for, for Murray, no. I think that that he could be a definite impact. I'm, talking, I'm sorry, I'm talking about rookie drafts. Right, right yeah, should, rookie drafts, yeah. of course, in Dynasty. I think it's fine if that's, if you have any type of quarterback need, I think that's a fine, a decent spot to take him. Yeah. From my perspective, I own a lot of, you know, like Lamar Jackson or whatever. I, I wish I had gotten some more Baker Mayfield last year. I did not. And I can't really trade for him. I, I think Mayfield's going to be an absolute superstar. I really wish that I'd gotten more shares. But I went in on Lamar Jackson. I think he's going to be really decent as well. Uh, so I, I think you could have that potential with Murray. And if, you know, if he doesn't do all that well, then just get rid of him. A mid-second round pick. I mean, look, I, I think you have an 80% chance of Murray being a, a good, impactful fantasy QB, right? So I think that's right. better than almost any other second, mid-second round pick you're going to get. Although receivers are deep this year. <laughs> Wait, so running backs and receivers are deep? No, running backs are crap. Receivers are deep. I thought you just said running backs are deep. Did I? Oh, no. Uh, you said running backs are deep in redraft, and then wide receivers are deep in rookie. Okay, I got it. Yeah. I understand now. Thanks. Sorry. So, sorry. I, I thought sorry. you knew that I thought all the running – I mean, not all, but the running backs are – this is not a good running back class. No, not for Don. And, you know, the good ones didn't even work out at the combine, which, you know, they shouldn't have. The but alleged good ones? Alleged good ones, yeah. I, I mean, I get why they didn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, what about Josh Rosen? This is a buying opportunity in dynasty. I mean, obviously, you know, with short rosters, you know, it, it, it's not like Rosen is not it, FFPC dynasty. You don't have enough space for, yeah. Rosen. Okay. All right. So, but what if he gets traded to a, a team like the giants, let's say? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that role, if you have a 20 man rosters, I think, yeah, Rosen is someone you can, you can keep and, I think he still has potential. I think that the, the Cardinals is giving up on him so early. If that's what they're going to do, I think is a mistake. But if uh, Murray is the absolute perfect fit for Kingsbury, well, there you go. Um, interesting Cliff Kingsbury trivia, which, by the way, if I, I, I can't remember. I think I was talking about this on my local show. But if you have not read the behind-the-scenes at the NFL Combine article, in ES, it's on ESPN.com. I think it's in the next episode, next episode, next issue of ESPN the Magazine by Wright Thompson – who like sort of embedded himself and at the combine and, and hung out with all these players and agents and coaches and, and so on and so forth. Really, really eye opening stuff. I, it was really entertaining. Who's it again? Wright, Wright Thompson. How do you spell that name? W R I G H T. Okay. Um, and uh, there is one line in there where I guess Cliff Kings. Is it a free article or do I have to you know use your insider? No, I think it should be free. Um, and you don't use my insider for anybody who's listening out there. Um, Do you still have it? Oh, yeah. It's, called, really, it's really... called ESPN Plus now. Oh, you have ESPN Plus. So you have oh, yeah, the quote-unquote insider account. Oh, really? So if I have it for video, I have it for the for ESPN? Do, so... Yeah, yeah. No, oh, use, use that same login. You can I don't do... even know what it is. Well, that's a problem. I just, put it up, I just push the buttons on the TV ball. Keep All right. Well, I'm getting old now. Okay. I, I'm just saying, like, if you – whatever your ESPN login is, you, you should have that. All right. Very good. Um, but there is one line in there where I guess Cliff Kingsbury was like in, in a hotel lobby or something. And he kind of shouted out to whoever was close. And this is the way I read it. Maybe I misread it, but said, Hey, hey where's the crown Plaza? 
you know, like looking for some area in the hotel and somebody else, that's three blocks that way. Like <laughs> Kingsbury wasn't even in the right spot. So you talk about making mistakes and this is the hey, guy. He's okay. the coach now. Yeah, whatever. The Washington football Redskins have acquired Case Keenum and a 2020 seventh round pick from Denver in exchange for a 2020 sixth round pick. Yeah, it must be a slow news week. Case Keenum is getting a $500,000 restructure bonus. He's already making $7 million in 2019. The Broncos are paying half of that. And he's uh, waiving the non-guaranteed ten and a half million he has been owed. So you look at Case Keenum, Dave. I think you and I can agree he is uh, ostensibly the starting quarterback for the Washington Redskins this year. I guess you know it'll be a race between him and Colt McCoy. I don't know if you heard Jay Gruden's comments on on Colt McCoy, but he loves him. Um, I don't know if this makes a difference for any of the Washington um, pass catchers, uh, be it Jordan Reed or Josh Doxson or, or what have you. I am totally off, I think, all Washington fantasy players this year. Um, you know, they're, all, they're going to all be super cheap. So you have Reed, Doxton, who's terrible. <laughs> uh, How, what, who what's the right – Who are the other receivers what, on that crappy team? Uh, well, Jameson Crowder is a free agent. Yeah, so you don't so, know if so, – so Doxton, the boss. Yeah, Reed, I mean – the guy who gets hurt all the time. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's not there's, – You know, Keenum could be okay. I mean, I'm not saying to draft him, but I'm saying he could get the ball to Reed. I mean, if Reed's healthy, he could be – all right. I wouldn't be that excited about it. But by the way, I'm, I'm impressed. That, good job by Keenum. He gets seven million bucks yeah. and he sucks. It's great. And he was so smart. He waived the non guaranteed ten and a half million because he knew he was never going to get it. So that's just a you know good move by Keenum. Good for you, buddy. I hope you make a lot of money. I'm glad you know. Good for you. That's great. Jordan Reed going at the eleven oh five and FFPC drafts right now. Eleven oh five is pretty darn cheap. I mean. The, the NFC East is still not that good defensively. I, I think that uh, you know Reed in the eleventh round. God, it's Remember when he was a third round pick? Everybody was all excited about the yeah. and we were saying don't don't draft Reed and that was proven correct. Yeah. In the eleventh round. I mean, who gives a crap? Um, just mini would you rather here with Jordan Reed with the three other tight ends going in the eleventh round next to him. Would you rather have Jordan Reed or Dallas Goddard? I'm gonna have to, oh man, that's actually kinda of tough. I am gonna, gonna say use, Reed here. They're gonna use Goddard a lot this year, but I'm gonna say Reed because you have to deal with Earth. All right. Uh Jordan Reed or Greg Olson. Um, I'll take Olsen. Actually. Yeah, I would too. I mean, Olsen's had his injury stuff, but Jordan Reed's had way more injuries. You can stuff. get Ian Thomas for probably, what, in the 14th? Uh, no, that's the thing. He, uh, goes, in the he goes in the 12th. Uh, so right so you'd have to go back to back. You get Olsen in the 11th and Thomas in the 12th. Yeah, and this right. is best ball, too, so I'm sure there's a lot of people taking advantage of that. Last one, Jordan Reed or Jimmy Graham? Reed. Graham is washed up, in my opinion. No, I don't think Jordan Reed is any spring chicken. <laughs> Marcel Reese uh, in, in the chat actually pointing out, what about Darius Geis for a Washington skill player? I'm, I, I don't think I'm interested in Geis because of the complications he had from the ACL surgery. I don't think he's going to recover in time. I'm actually questioning if I own him in Dynasty, I'd ship him away as soon as I could if I can get full value or even close to it. I own him in one Dynasty League. I'm waiting for the report to come out saying that he's cutting laterally, and then I want to move him for like a 2020 first. Do you think I could do that? I'm sure you can move him for a 2020 first right now. Offer it to everybody. Yeah, maybe. Do you ever do that? Do you ever offer? Just yeah, I have. Yeah, does that work usually? Um, no, no. no. Not me either. Uh, I, I, you know, I feel it's a win when I get a rejection. Uh, yeah, exactly. Rather, right. rather than a non, like I didn't, I didn't receive anything. You know, I'm in this Gridiron Legends League with Duckworth as a commissioner, and he sends me. You know, I, I am in that league with oh, you. Oh, good, yeah. great. I'm glad. So, uh, by the way, I sent you a trade. Uh, I'll get to this in a second. Okay. So, yeah, you sent me a trade, but then you revoked it right away, so yeah, I kind of I ignored it, it. I felt it wasn't good. I, I didn't even look at what it was. I saw you offered to me. It was a 107 and Boyd for Julio, and I'm like, wait, that's not I, – I think I need more. And maybe you wouldn't have taken it anyway, whatever. God, I have the 107 in that league? I think so, yeah. I think you just – Oh, yeah, because I lost – yeah, that's what it was. Out. Yep. So, anyway, so I, I offered a whole bunch of trades, and then Duckworth emails the whole league. It's like, hey, could everyone vote on the poll? Like, four people haven't voted. I was one of them. And it's like, yeah. There's no, two polls. I voted on both I of them. I voted on both now, but, I mean, it's like – None of you people are responding to my stupid trade offers trying to deal away Julio and Gurley. It's like, granted, Gurley's got his possible you know, arthritis issue, which we should talk about. Julio's 30-31, but he just started actually scoring touchdowns. I'm trying to rebuild this team. And none of these knobs are actually responding to any of my trade offers. It's like, at least reject him, for Christ's sake. All right, there's my rant. Let's talk about this Gurley thing, because I don't think I put it in here at all. Uh when Rob and I were putting this together. Um, what? Is, I mean, we got to be concerned here. Totally. Todd Gurley I'm, I'm, is like a top three pick in FFPC drafts right now, and I think people are underrating this. 
I, I'm, I'm selling Gurley everywhere I can at this point. Really? And, and no one's buying. No, not, no, people are, I don't know what they're doing. They're sailing. They're on a cruise somewhere. They're not paying attention. They're not, re, at least reject the offer for the love of God. Thank you. That's my, again. what have you been, so how many leagues do you own him? Well, I own him four out of my eight. Okay, and what have you been trying to get? <laughs> what are you just, doing? Just as a ballpark. Taking I'm, a UPC picture. Of the I'm logging this I, it, into my untapped app. That this <laughs> keeps a track of, of <laughs> what I drink. You can computer. unlock badges and stuff. Yes, I know it's stupid. No, that's fine. That's a local uh, stone. Yeah, this is uh, the Stone Arch Scottish style ale. It's, uh, nice. it's a popular one up here. I know a lot of people who like it. And I got this uh, part of a six-pack on sale. So I was really thrilled. Nice. Anyway, so the question was, girly. And like, what have you been off? What have you been trying to get in exchange for him? Um, all right. Well, actually, I'll continue. Just, I mean, just ballpark. Is it like a pick and a player? Is it two players? Yeah, either it just would, one would player. Like, it would be like a guy like a carry on Johnson and like a first round pick. Or I, I think I did offer Gurley for three first. Now, granted, maybe that's a lot, whatever. Um, or two first. Actually, I offered Julio for the 102 and the 106. No response. Right. Uh, I, off, I actually offered Gurley for McCaffrey. Now, granted, I, I would not, if I own McCaffrey and someone offered me Gurley for him, I would not take it. But the current rankings have them similarly ranked, you know? Mm-hmm. So, again, at least reject the damn offer. And if, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. Or, like, it would be like Chubb and somebody else, or Chubb and a little something more. But not that much, really. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, Wasp guy in the chat room right now. Now, I, it's it's difficult because you, I would take Gurley over the twenty twenty one oh one. Okay, so that that was my question. Um, and you don't know, you can't make that deal right now because you really don't know who's going to have the one oh one in twenty twenty unless you play in a league where it's you know predetermined somehow. Right. But you would rather have Gurley over you know whoever uh, coming out. At this point, it's you just you don't know you don't know. I mean and. Some of these players, not everyone becomes Saquon Barkley, and not every draft has a Saquon Barkley, just like this draft. This draft may have DK Metcalf as the so-called 101 pick, and he has a he has Stephen Hill bust potential. I mean, he really does. It's not yeah. – people – if you recall, Corderell Patterson, Tavon Austin, they were 101-type level picks at certain points. I mean, yeah. these guys do bust, so – it's not a guarantee, and not again. Gurley could end up, you know, retiring in two years for all we know, or less. Who knows? Or he could end up being fine. All right, let's get into some emails here, Dave. A uh, lot of lot of dynasty rookie stuff here. We're going to try to help out the listeners. The first is from Paul in Sugarland, Texas. Not sure if you guys caught Preston Williams' pro day, but it was less than spectacular. Are his college numbers good enough for me to consider in the second round of my rookie drafts? Now. Uh, Preston Williams uh, did put up, uh, man, I thought I just had it up here. Um, and where is it? Okay. So he had a 4.57.40 uh, at his pro day, 31 and a half vertical, eh, 116. Hang on. So let me write this down. Preston yeah. Williams, 4.57. So, so that's actually like a 4.62 if you're talking about combine numbers, but anyway. <laughs> right, yeah. 31 and a half inch vertical, 116 inch broad jump. Um, he is, uh, Dave measures in at six foot four, 210 pounds. Uh, last season for Colorado state, he caught 96 balls for 1300 yards and 14 touchdowns. But so the numbers are great. The athleticism, it seems leaves a lot to be desired. Dane Brugler says he's actually a long shot to get drafted now after his pro day. This is a guy I'm not excited about. And I feel like it's fine if you want to take a flyer on him. I wouldn't be taking a flyer on him in the second round of rookie drafts. Yeah, I'd be more inclined to look at him in the third. I know there's a thread on footballguys.com in the shark pool about Preston Williams, so you might want to check that out. And um, I think it says Preston Williams, best player in the draft. But you do have to respect, even with, you know, he had, he's had these off-field issues, which is why he wasn't invited. Yeah, to that was another thing I didn't bring up, yeah. Yeah, so even if you had give that maybe only a 25, 20% chance of recurrence, if he doesn't get drafted, if it's a sixth or seventh round pick, it gets a little dicey, right? He's not Tyreek Hill, where Tyreek got drafted in the fifth, where he had to say, you know, again, personal issues. Uh, but Tyreek Hill, by the way, I, he has the fourth best 200-meter dash of all time in high school. Right now, oh, still. Yeah. I mean, that's how fast Tyreek Hill is. Did, um, did he get invited to the Combine, do you remember? Tyreek Hill, was he there? I don't recall, to be honest with you. I do I remember think that, that uh, Matt Waldman didn't have him listed at all. Okay. Was a voluminous... 1700 page rookie scouting portfolio that right. he wasn't even on he wasn't even in it 
Um, I feel like they did not have that rule where if you had some sort of like, you know, charge against you, you don't get invited to the combine. Um, I don't think they had that rule when Tyree Kill was was there. So I, I think he was at. I mean, who knows? I, it doesn't really matter anymore. We know he's a stud. That's all that matters. I'm, you know, I'm guessing. Did he, you draft Hill in a lot of your dynasty leagues? Just curiously. No, I didn't at all. How did you miss the boat on that? Because you were always Mister Tyree Kill. No, I totally missed the boat. The first I missed the boat 100 percent the first year. Was not aware of him. Not really. Didn't have anything. And then he came on the second half of his rookie he season. He came right? on. He was good. Yeah, and he did really well. You know, second half. I ended up trading for him in almost every dynasty. I got him. It was like he was a costing between a 107, 106 to the 112. That was about the average cost of getting him. Oh home. yeah, you acquired. I remember I, that. I, now I, I paid a bit more for to Meyer, but yeah, I I traded for him in like four or five leagues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting stuff. Because again, the experts weren't thinking. He, oh, he's just a gimmick guy. This or that. Obviously not. Right. I get it. Uh, let's go to Pete in Portland, Maine. He writes, "Hello, Ebron and Johnson." Dave, do you get that? Ebron, Ebron and Johnson. Okay, I get Ebron. There Eric, Johnson. Ebron, David, oh, great. Johnson. That's you know, not that smart. Why isn't Debo Samuel considered a first-round pick by seemingly any draft Knicks out there, especially after his 132.2 spark score put him in the 93rd percentile? I'll hang up and listen. That is Pete in Portland, Maine. You know, Debo Samuel is a guy that I think I, I talked about quite a bit towards the end of the college football season. And then for whatever reason, I don't know, I've just been focusing on other guys I didn't watch uh, a lot of. But, okay, a couple of things about Debo Samuel. One, he's 5'11", so he's not like a huge guy. 5'11", 214, okay. I mean, Spark score was great. He's a thick player, though. He's thick. I mean, weight is more important than height. It really is. All right. He will turn, uh, he, well, he just, excuse me, in January, he turned 23. So he's not a young man as far as rookies go. Okay. Uh, that's the other thing working against him. That's true. I also, th- I, I mean, he could go in the first round. I mean, I haven't seen him really mocked there anywhere either. Actually, I did see him mocked there a couple of months ago. I haven't seen him there anymore. I don't know what happened, what changed. Um, but he should be going day two for sure. I mean, he's not a day three guy. I don't know if there's a huge difference between round two and round one as, as far as how people value him. I like him for dynasty quite a bit. He's probably going to be a first round uh, dynasty um, rookie pick. I think so. Yeah, I, I I don't see what why people are hating on Debo Samuel. Brian Studebaker. I have not done my full research. That's word. fine. Brian Stu. Well, he's an old man. Brian Studebaker, who was on the uh, season premiere of the Road of His High Stakes Lowdown uh, of last month, Dave, he uh, got a chance to watch a lot of Debo Samuel because he lives in South Carolina and uh, just was. He's totally enamored by him. And Brian Studebaker, by the way, I think he won like four dynasty leagues with the FFPC this past year. So he knows how to he knows how to acquire assets, and he likes Debo Samuel. So right. something so, something we should keep an eye on. This could be a guy that um, uh, goes to one of the quote unquote bad teams drafting in the early second round that might be throwing a lot in 2019. So pay attention to him uh, for dynasty as well. All right, moving on. Uh, Andy. In Fort Smith, Arkansas. Hey guys, are Ryquel Armstead's size and speed intriguing enough for you guys to overcome his lack of pass catching? Thank you for the email. Andy in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Now, Ryquel Armstead is actually a guy um, I know a little bit about because we talked a little bit about him on my on my local show here in Northeast Wisconsin. He is a running back out of Temple, Dave. He measures in at 5'11. He was the number one speed scorer. 5'11", 220. Did he really have the best speed score of anybody at the Combine? Yeah, we, we talked about it last week on the show. I know you don't listen to him. Maybe that's talk. what it was. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> it was a 112. I think we talked about him uh, on the both, uh, um, both shows. 4'4", uh, 5'11", four, four, 220. Now, here's the issue with him. Last season, 13 targets, 8 catches for 52 yards. Blah. Nice. Yeah. I'm not it's on like board Tony with Michelle, that. like Michelle, actually, in college. I think, okay. <sighs> Okay, okay. Let me ask you this, and this is a little bit of a leading question. If you could pick one skill that a rookie running back absolutely has to have for you to want to sink a decent, like a first-round pick into him in fantasy football, in rookie drafts, what's the one skill he's got to have? (laughs) This is a very leading question. Yeah. Uh, Pass catching. And touchdowns are close behind, but 
being able well, to score touchdowns. But, uh, okay, so so just that he finds the end zone in college? Yeah. Really? Okay. Well, I'm just, you know, they have to score. Yeah, but I mean. Or, you know, I, okay, I guess that's, a, that's actually interesting, you know, because a lot of guys score tons of touchdowns in college. So right. That makes no, that, you're right. Yeah, pass catching ability. I think yards per, uh, yards per rush actually is a pretty big stat for me, actually, too. Okay, I get it. Now, that's not really a skill, but okay. Sorry, I thought you were said stat skill, whatever. Nah, whatever. It doesn't make, doesn't make a difference. I got the answer I was looking for. <laughs> um, so, with, with the pass catching, so Armstead is – would you take him at the end of the first round of, of a rookie draft no, if he not, fell into a, a decent situation? I mean, if he fell into a decent situation, was really overdrafted. I mean, but where is he going to go? He's probably going to go in the third, fourth, fifth round, right? Uh, so I, I just real, had this Real-life draft. Um. According to uh, Roto World, he's viewed as a day two, day three prospect. So third, fourth round would probably be where he is. That what you just said? I'm sorry. I don't third, listen to you when you talk exactly. on the show. Third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, okay. Third and fifth round running backs don't generally hit. Or they end up being Jordan Howard good for one year and then crap thereafter. Right. You got to trade him after that first year. That's the way it works. That's absolutely true. You know, you could have, tra- like we talked about Zach Stacy, you could have gotten oh, a lot for whatever Zach Whatever you wanted. After yeah. that first year, yep. you end up being total crap. Yeah. Trent Richardson. Who's, who's the total crap guy wait, here? Wait, T. Rich was a, was a pedigree yeah. back. So it's, it's Stacy was a fifth-round pick? Uh, yeah. Vanderbilt? Is that where he went to school? I don't recall where he went. All right. Well, whatever. Um, so who's the total crap guy this year? Yeah, who's the crap guy that did well? Brackwell Armstead. <laughs> no, the one going into this oh, year. Oh, going in. Okay, so a rookie running back last year that's going to fall off the face of the earth. Yeah, that had a good season last year who was like I got moderately, one for drafted, you? moderately drafted, you know, mediocre talent. All right. Can I throw one at you? Yeah, throw, throw 10 at me. Well, I'll throw one at you. What about Sony Michelle? He was a first round. Oh, we got we to go with, I'm, I, I'm just thinking rookie running backs here. All right, we, so we got to think of somebody who went like day two or day three. Yes, non pedigree All right, how about this? <laughs> Philip Lindsay, Dave. Okay, now that, no, that, no, that is legit. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, uh, I pay Chris, attention. No, Chris Carson, too, but he wasn't a rookie. He wasn't a rookie. But, no. um, yeah, Lindsay. And that's it is a question, right? Because you just, Royce Freeman was a highly drafted player. I actually still like Lindsey, though. Um, so I don't. I don't. Just uh, because uh, Royce, you don't you don't like I, Royce Freeman? I just think Lindsey's a really damn good football player. He really, okay. he really is good. All right. Freeman's pretty solid too, but I really think Lindsey's. Good. Um. I okay. What about Naheem Hines? Well, Hines sucked. So he, didn't, he was fine in his role. He was all right. And then he there was, was injuries. Right. Mac was hurt a lot of the year too. Right. Mac was actually really solid, like really good when he was playing. Um, yeah, he was. I know Matt Kelly from, um, um, Roto Underworld and Player Profiler loves him. I'm um, just looking at, God, can't, can we just get a regular <laughs> GD list here? That's all I want. I got to sort through all these videos and all this other nonsense here. I'm, yeah, it's, it's tough because a lot of the pedigree guys were like the studs last year. Um, by the way, do you ever pull up a USA Today type article and there's yeah, so many the pop-ups? Worst. I just, cl- I just close it. If I accidentally click on one of their terrible articles with eight pop-ups and all that crap, I just get rid of it. Um, Ito Smith, Jordan Wilkins, Josh Adams. By the I way, mean, uh, Roger Wells in the chat room says, Lindsay's still in a body cast, so no thanks. Yeah. Sophia, is that who's, the, who's still in a body cast? Philip Lindsay. Oh, my God, yeah. Must have got a, what are you, in a car wreck? No, remember he hurt. He <laughs> smashed his wrist uh, week seven, week sixteen. So he smashed his wrist, and they put his whole freaking body in a. Cast? Well, I mean, I I don't know. Maybe it got serious. How did he, Roger? How did he put in a body cast if it's just the wrist? Well, maybe it's it, the infection spread, something like that. <laughs> um, uh, Game of Thrones just cut the hand off. Yeah, Wash guy wants to know. We need to know your 2019 breakouts, post hype or otherwise. Do you have any good post hype sleepers for 2019, Dave? Uh, okay. not offhand, but I will in the next ten minutes. No, oh, okay. Well, perfect. We'll do that. And in the well, meantime, a few minutes to think. Well, I'll give you a few minutes to think while I read this email here from Travis in Raleigh, North Carolina. Any love for either of the West Virginia receivers, David Sills or Gary Jennings? Thanks, you two. Uh, thank you for the email, Travis in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I'm going to start with uh, probably David Sills because this is a guy that I really thought there'd be more buzz on. Um, heading into the rookie draft season based on um, the hype that was on him coming into the, his final collegiate season at West Virginia. He's six foot four, two ten. obviously had Will Greer throwing to him last year, who, you know, was piping it all over the field. He only ran a four, five, seven, um, uh, 40 at the combine. He's six. I don't know if I just said this or not. I don't even listen to myself when I talk. He's six foot three, two eleven. He scored six red zone touchdowns, second most among the receivers at the NFL Combine in 2018. 
Um, if you remember way back in the day, as a middle schooler, Sills was offered a scholarship to play quarterback at USC. Uh, that did not work out, but he did go to West Virginia and put up some really good stats uh, last year um, for the Mountaineers. Dave, I'm not Sue. I don't know what you know about Sills. I, it, it's probably not a ton, and that's probably worthwhile because I, I'm, he's not a guy I'm excited about drafting in, um, in Dynasty. You know, he's a white guy that doesn't get labeled as um, – sneaky fast or anything like that and if you're a white receiver and you're not being labeled as sneaky fast uh you're slow <laughs> that's that, actually funny. I, i'm not even trying to be funny that's 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 what it is you know i really i don't know a whole lot about david okay. i'm gonna be totally honest that's fine and we don't have to talk about him a ton because he's he's i in my opinion uh, again feel free to disagree with me high stakes fantasy football at gmail.com I don't view him as anything more than a round three, round four flyer in rookie drafts um, at the most. Now, his teammate, Gary Jennings, uh, who I just had his profile up on my screen, and of course, it's disappeared. There we go. Uh, six foot two, 215. Now, uh, he ran a 4-4-2-40. Uh, this was at the Senior Bowl. He um, was on the South team there. Uh, According to Zebra Technologies, um, his field speed was 21.56 miles per hour. Okay. Um, 82nd percentile spark score. And this is a guy who, while he was the second banana at West Virginia, uh, he might be drafted ahead of David Sills. So Gary Jennings, super big burner. Uh, I, I don't think he's that polished of a route runner. And again, another guy that I think will struggle to be drafted on day two. A guy I'm paying attention to for rookie drafts, but, you know, he's, 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 he's going to be a tough guy to roster because I think he's a little bit of a project. Uh, once again, I think you know more than me about okay. this player. I've right. not done much research on either of these two when players. You do do, when you do get into it a little bit more, I'm going to assume you're going to come to the same conclusion as me, Dave. But if you don't, let's bring up these West Virginia guys within the next few weeks on the show, and we'll, we'll talk about them more. I, but I think, again, you're going to come to the same conclusion. Uh, final email of the night. Uh, now, this is a guy, well, maybe you don't know about him either, but we'll find out. This is a guy that you should uh, know. Uh, Joe in Aurora, Colorado, was the true star of the combine, Miles Boykin. I've never even heard of anyone getting a perfect spark score before that is joe in aurora colorado thanks so much for the email joe dave did you ever hear i've never heard of a perfect spark score before uh no is, is there such a thing I mean, uh, apparently there is it, there's no limits of the parameters of like but i guess it's the percentile right yes if you get every question right on the act you're at a 99.9 percentile miles boykin a receiver from notre dame six foot four 228 he recorded a perfect 150 spark score tested in the 99.9 percentile nice uh you ran the fastest three cone uh among the receivers 6.77 oh 6.77 that's about 0.75 seconds faster than metcalf and by the he, way metcalf might have slipped uh, yeah i just i did actually watch the video it looked like he kind of slipped a little bit on yeah, what i hit then he doesn't, still, have, doesn't have the balance dave <laughs> he's he's still not the not the best of the jewelry that's, uh, maybe if he, maybe he had some body fat to balance him out he wouldn't have slipped on that, that three article cone. that whole thing has been debunked by the way has it been debunked yeah, there was like a, there was a, what was it, a Pro Football Weekly article about... Oh, Pro Football Talk. Whatever it is, yeah, yeah. There was like two or three different trainers that said it's all BS. It was ridiculous. Well, that's trainers, whatever. What They're do they know? Your body has to be at 3% in order for your organs to function. <laughs> so, yes, he's not at 1.9% because he was able to walk and talk. And he's not a dead body. Yeah. Um all right, so getting back to Miles Boykin, he also had the best, he was tied for the best vertical jump at the combine, 43 and a half there. So, Dave, this guy is ticking all the uh, the metrics uh, here, but, um, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, three seasons in Notre Dame, 77 catches, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. That's in three seasons. Well, so, his last season, he, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but he had about, let's say, about 25 to 30% in that neighborhood of the yards and touchdowns in Notre Dame. They're not a big passing team. I did actually watch Boykin's film. The one thing I, you know, he had some really nice plays, but I didn't, I didn't see all the explosiveness that you saw at the combine on on, tape. on, on the, on the yeah. film that I was watching. He made some really nice plays. Part of it though is because of just, 
he's just a, he's a huge guy. I mean, he's just big. So it just it looks like he's going a little bit slower than maybe he is. Possibly, I don't really know. Uh, maybe he plays a little slower. I, I nevertheless, though, with that type of athleticism, I'm pretty optimistic about Miles Boykin. I think he's a player I'd be trying to target. Eleven foot eight broad jump. Dane Brugler from the Athletics says he's going to have to go back and uh, watch some uh, some tape on Miles Boykin. Um, does he sneak into the first round of the NFL draft? I would have to say no, but I bet I wouldn't. I wouldn't surprise me to see him go in like the forties. Uh, yeah, so he's a first round rookie draft pick. Yeah, like the second round of the real draft, and yeah, I think um, yeah. mid to late first rounder. You know, you're gonna be looking at guys. It's gonna be interesting because people will be looking at players, and this is me. You know, I'm just conjecturing, but yeah, um, players like him versus uh, Andy Isabella, completely different players. But Isabella is being talked about. I was reading the chart pool of football guys. He's talking, you know, people are like so hyped up, up, hyped up about Isabella. Like, oh, I have the 105. I'm going to take him there. Or I have the 110. I hope he falls to me. So I, I'm seeing a range of like 105 to 112 without a draft position for Isabella right now. Oh, my God. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. I think Isabella goes in the second or third round as an outside receiver, maybe even earlier than the third. I, I think he's going to play outside. People have been comparing him to Cooks and Hilton, not just slot players. Isabella he's, is not someone to sleep on. He's going to be an outside receiver. How, how big is uh, uh, is uh, Isabella? Five eight and change. He's going to play on the outside. That I mean, is, Cooper I mean, Cooper Cup's a hoss. Yeah, but uh, Brandon Cooks isn't that tall. Who else isn't tall? Not I mean, that good on the outside either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite, telling you, quite that, frankly, that people are people all right. Are talking about. All right, okay. People are saying, yeah. Um, Roger Wells. Uh, in the chat room tonight, and we'll get into these guys more as as the draft gets closer. But and we should focus more on running. We tire. You know, the thing is, like, even though it's not a great running back year, it, and it's a great receiver year, we can't ignore the running backs. And two of them that we should talk about. Uh, he says two rookies you want: Miles Sanders and Daryl Henderson. Uh, Sanders from uh, Penn State, and Henderson, I believe, was from Memphis, if I'm remembering correctly, Dave. Uh, so we'll get into those guys a little on. You're you're uh, not uh, particularly thrilled with either one. I think you. I thought you liked Sanders. Did we have a positive conversation about Miles Sanders? Yeah, he did. He did well at the combine. And again, I have to watch a lot more tape of Penn State. But I, right. yeah, he has potential for sure. Right. Okay. Uh, good enough uh, for me there. Now, do you have your 2019 breakouts ready yet? I've, I think I feel like I I've only given you like six or seven minutes. You don't have to I give all play, of them I, away. Just give a couple. I'm just saying some players I'm trying to trade for right now. Is In that, Dynasty? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, David Johnson, I think actually, I think he was the number nine player last year. And I think that, and with everything going wrong, I think he'll do even better this yeah, year. Yeah. You know, we think he, we had, he had a bad season last year. He really didn't. His team did. And if his team improves even marginally, uh, he could be a, a massive get for uh, Dynasty and, and could pay off, by the way, in uh, redraft right now. If you look at best ball uh, for FFPC, Dave, do you want to make a quick guess at where David Johnson's current ADP is? Uh, 205. It is 204. That's ah, a, so close. That, that's, a, that's a good buy right there uh, for sure. All right, so actually they want to know about my, our Damian Williams assessment. I actually think Damian Williams was fantastic last year. Yep. I was one of the few players to start him in the uh, Kentucky playoffs, by the way. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, I had no other choices. But anyway, I, did, uh, I was happy with how he did. Uh huh. Um, and they're talking about Hyde actually visiting KC, which is good news for Williams. They didn't sign him to an expensive contract, but maybe they're just going to be smart with their, you know, with their salary cap money, which really would be smart for KC because you have Mahomes, Kelsey, and Hill. You have to pay those three big offensive studs. You're still going to pay your defense. You've got to pay your offensive line. Why not go cheap at running back with a guy like Damian Williams right. for the next two to three years? Yeah. I think that's a great move, and I hopefully they're going to that. I can't remember if I've talked about it on this show or not, but I think he's a great, great value in FFPC drafts right now, going at the 304 for that elite of an offense, especially if they sign Hyde, if they don't invest in running back on day one or day two of the draft. If they don't invest in running back on the first two days of the draft, I bet his ADP shoots up at least a round. In that neighborhood, yeah. I mean, it's now is that this is another reason you should I don't be think drafting he's right go now. To the David Johnson range, but it's going to be close. Oh, I bet he does. I mean, he's oh, going. Right. The offense is so much better. You're right. Okay, but but David Johnson is going at the two hundred four. He's going at the three hundred four right now. You I just think set around. You see yeah, around. Yeah, I think, I think he's around. totally going to get there. All right. All right. Well, I guess we'll see. All right, we will. All right, so I got three other players. All right, so who did you name so far? David Johnson and Damian Williams. Okay. Well, that. Someone else named Damian Williams. But that, I, oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was one of yours. Okay. Well, it's also a, it's a good choice. Yes. So, sure. Yeah, that, exactly. I have it right here, Buck. Ah, there you go. Um, you know, I love DJ Moore. I think DJ Moore right now is being drafted in redraft super incorrectly. Yeah. Way yep. too cheap. Yeah, I agree. Way too cheap. He's going to be awesome. But also, in Dynasty, I think picking up Curtis Samuel is a move you want to be doing. Interesting. 
I think Sam, Samuel actually had a phenom score in the threes two years ago. And again, mm-hmm. I, I eight dynasty leagues. I own zero shares of Samuel. Most of you no one responds to my offers. But uh, I think he's a player you really want to have. He always had those ankle injuries that, that even at Ohio State, he was never healthy and, and right. one of those things. But You get rid of Funches. You get Olsen is going to be, you know, he's getting older. I, I think there's some targets. Well, open. I mean, Ian Thomas, is, I mean, he showed it, that he was pretty capable last year. But you're right. You want to guess where DJ Moore is going in best ball right now? I thought I saw it. I thought I heard in the ninth. Is that? No, no, no. Seventh. Six, 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 six eleven. Six ten. I think you might have mentioned it. Yeah, he's going in the neighborhood. I'm just going to name a few of the receivers that he's going around. Alshon Jeffrey, Tyler Boyd, Doug Baldwin, Calvin Ridley, Corey Davis, Mike Williams, Chris Godwin, and Tyler Lockett. All so going out of those, I like Ridley and uh, Boyd. Not you that, like Boyd, huh? Not that I don't like the other guys, but I like Boyd and Ridley. Okay. Why wouldn't – I mean, I know that uh, Green was hurt a bit last year. You don't like Godwin. Boyd showed really well. Godwin averaged 11.7 points per game last year, outplayed by Adam Humphreys. I get that Humphreys is going to be gone and now. And DJ's probably going to be gone too. And DJX is going to be gone, and Godwin should take that next step. I just – I was hoping he would have shown more in his second season. Okay. I still like him there. I don't, I don't dislike him. Yeah. Actually, I don't. Uh, I know you like Tyler Lockett this year. What about – oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't like Tyler Lockett. Oh, you don't like Tyler Lockett. I mean, I don't know. I mean – so tough because the, t- the targets are not there. He's a talented player. You, I, we were talking about he's going to pull ahead of Baldwin. Is that the rumor? Is that what we're saying? I think that's already happened. <laughs> I, I guess we'll find out. It's like uh, there's a rumor we might be doing a show at 9 o'clock tonight, Dave. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I'm back and forth on Lockett. Okay. Fair really enough. Well, finish, play, finish, last, your God, finish your Godwin point, or were you done with Godwin? Done with, done with Godwin. Okay. Last player is Antonio Callaway, actually. I think that for the Browns, he was being outplayed late, and he had a lot of mistakes and screw-ups last year. But I think he was only a rookie. I think his second season, he's a really talented player. I, again, I like Callaway. Dave, let me ask you this. Who would you rather have here in FFPC best ball? Antonio Callaway at the 1301 or Curtis Samuel at the 1304? I'll take uh, Samuel. Okay. No, I didn't even have to think about it much. There's not other. Uh, uh, but that's interesting. You know, that, those are nice spots for those two players. Yeah. There, there, there's a very interesting receivers going around. I mean, okay, I'm not going to name all of them, but other receivers going in that general area include Michael Gallup, Anthony Miller, and DK Metcalf. At what spot? And DK Metcalf's going at the 13-12 right now. What were the other two players? You just Holy cow, I just noticed this. Someone took DK Metcalf at the 508. <laughs> the 508 day. Oh, FFPC draft. Holy right. hell. Who were the other two players you mentioned? Uh, Anthony Miller and Michael Gallup. Not a big fan of Anthony Miller nor Michael Gallup. Yeah. Neither one of them, you know, if you can't, I don't know what they did exactly, but if you can't get over five, 600 yards as a rookie, you're probably not going to be very good. And uh, so he's not going to be very good. What would you? I don't, if, think, I don't think either one is going to be. I think if you could deal Anthony Miller or Gallup right now. For a mid-second rounder? I think you might be able to get a late first, actually. Really? Yeah, because those oh, players, God, were, I those totally players get were hyped on... up a little bit, and they did all right. I, I think there's a chance at that. Oh, I got it sent. I don't have Miller anywhere, but I have Gallup in a couple of spots. I'm going to I'm gonna try to do that. That's. I got to do that, man. I got to do that. All right, let's uh, move on and talk about the tight ends here for the last few minutes of the show. There's, there's not a ton to get into uh, on this. Um, I think that um, as we look at uh, – now I have the FFPC scoring here, so it might be skewed for those of you who don't play FFPC – uh, tight end premium format. No surprise, Kelsey Ertz, Kittle, one, two, and three, and that's how they're being drafted this year. Your thoughts on Eric Ebron, Dave? Um, this is a guy who finished a distant fourth behind George Kittle last year. 74 catches, 827 yards, and somehow 14 touchdowns, which I, I don't... Yes, they were I, all when he, whenever I didn't start him, he scored three touchdowns. I mean, I cannot fathom how that happened. You want to take a guess at where he's going in drafts right now? Ebron? Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Higher. That's, that's how confident I am that you're, you're going to guess wrong. Higher meaning a later pick? Uh, higher meaning you are going to guess a spot that he is. Is, high, is a high pick the 101 or is a high pick the 2012? A high pick is the 101. All right. So lower pick? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you guess, he's, pra- gonna, right, he's probably was, going sooner than that. I was going to say, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. I was going to say the 804. He is going. Right, I mean, okay, now let me guess the, the BS guess, right? The five set, 506. They have his ADP and FFPC best ball drafts right now. Hmm. 
is the 412. Wow, that is the high. 412. Okay. What did Jack Doyle, who's I don't think is very good, get shot? Was he, I mean, Jack Doyle. I yeah, he was hurt a ton last year. Obviously, he's not going his until skill the, set is hurt. He, he sucks. He's not going until the eight twelve. Yeah, okay. I think Jack Doyle is not that good. All right, that's fine. But Eric Ebron is going ahead of O.J. Howard, David Njoku, and Evan Engram right now in drafts. Well, Ingram, he's going ahead of Ingram. Yes. Evan Ingram is going at the 506. Okay, so Evan Ingram, let's talk about him real quickly. I okay. Mean, he finished, play- by the way, uh, as far as tight ends go, uh, tight end 13 last year, but obviously hobbled a good portion hobbled, of the season. And now ODB is whining and pissing and moaning like an elite wide receiver that's a prima donna does. He wants to get traded. And Sterling Shepard kind of sucks. So I think Ingram's a super fantastic buy at this point. If you can pick him up and people aren't really paying attention, yeah. most of the time they are. But, I mean, in, the, in basketball drafts, people should know all this stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just, it's weird to see, I guess. Okay, here's another guy. I'm not going to, we won't talk about where he finished because he basically didn't play it all last year. But he is going as the tight end four off the board. Hunter Henry, Dave, going at the 408. That's a steep investment for a dude who did not play it all last year. And a lot of people on board with Mike Williams breaking out this year. We know Keenan Allen and what he can do for the targets uh, on that offense. Um, I would make the contention that the Chargers defense continues to get better and they're going to be less reliant on slinging it all over the field. Um, probably no Tyrell Williams, so that'll help Mike Williams this year. But Hunter Henry in the fourth round? Man, I don't know, man. That seems a little bit early. Yeah. But coming off the ACL, I, he was a really talented player. I think he's worth a lot. One-year aberration, or is there something here for free agent Jared Cook, who finished as tight end five last year? I think Cook, yeah, he's. I don't think he's all that great. 68 catches, 900 yards, six touchdowns. He had a great year. Is he even going to get re-signed? I thought he was a free agent. He is a free agent. That's what I'm saying. We've got to figure out where he's going first. Oh, no one knows. Where um, is he getting drafted? You uh, yeah, I can tell you. He's, he's sort of in the third tier of tight ends in, in FFPC drafts. Just on a flyer. Where... He is 6'11 right now, which, again, when you don't know where he's going, I don't think I can invest a six-round pick yeah, I know. That's, into him. That's up there. Um, Breakout guy last year, 71 catches, 660 yards, and four scores as tight end six. It's Mr. Austin Hooper. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, can't get, I cannot get excited about Austin Hooper. Because you like Calvin Ridley this year. I just, I just don't think Hooper is all that great. No offense. Julio. I'm taken. <laughs> well, I know you're a, you're a Hooperite. I'm not really a Hooperite at all. Like, I had him in a couple of dynasty leagues. I, people know whenever I have somebody on my dynasty team, I tend to talk him up quite a bit. Hooperite. So I, I just don't think he's all that great. And you still have, you know, he's the third wheel at the very best. And if Freeman's healthy, I think part of that is due to Freeman not being healthy. And Coleman was not a pass catcher. So the little dink and dunk passes were, yeah. going, were going to him. Uh, seven oh six right now in FFPC drafts. I think he can do better than that. Well, he has. I mean, his ceiling is like you know, it's like the glass ceiling for women in the sixties. You just you're not hitting it. You know, he just he just does not have the ceiling of anyone who could be end up being elite. Ebron could end up being elite. Yeah, no, Henry he, yeah. can end up being elite. Hooper cannot. Hooper, I just don't think can be unless he, two he, receivers fall down and get hurt. He's hilarious. He made the Pro Bowl last year. That doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying. If he's not an all-pro, all-pro means something. Pro Bowl means crap. Kyle Rudolph had a nice little season finishing at tight end seven. I'm a little surprised Trey Burton finished at tight end eight, but I think that was probably because he had the six touchdowns there. There's a lot of people bunched up right there. I think tight end really fell off after the elites. I mean, tight end last year was a total train wreck. It was a mess. Yeah. Burton absolutely 100% busted, and he was a tight end eight. Yeah. David Njoku, uh, who had flashes, he finished at tight end nine. Vance McDonald, dude, tight end ten. He could have a nice season if Brown is moved in Pittsburgh. He could, actually, right. I uh, like him. Jimmy Graham, tight end 11. He was kind of. <laughs> tight end 11. That's t- so terrible. And, t- and tight end 12, Rob Gronkowski. I mean, uh, unbelievable. I feel, like, I feel like pouring out my beer like Ice Cube in Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Because my brother is dead. Evan Gronk, Engr- Gronk's coming back, though. I actually think that if you want to get, I bet you can get Gronk for like a song at this point for pretty cheap in Dynasty. Hey, do you, you own, for do one you, year? Do you, you own him anywhere? Two. I think I own him in... Uh, Maybe in one league, maybe one. And I, you know what's funny is I dealt him last year. Remember I made that Gronk for Henry trade, and then Henry tore his ACL. Oh, yeah. Couldn't be happier. I love the trade. I mean, I got nothing out of Henry last year, and uh, it was great. I mean, how much did the owner who you traded Gronk to benefit from Gronk? I don't know, but I mean, I did get. Be- I 
did get fortunate enough. I did win that league last year without. Oh my god! I had Matt Lacoste as my <laughs> or Lacrosse. How the hell? Who, who are you playing against in this league? You won a league with Matt Lacoste as your starting tight end. I, I, I had the rest of my players did well. Well, they would have had to have. Well, yeah, it was. Um, okay. Uh, tight end 15 last year, O.J. Howard. He should be in for a nice bounce back. Your boy, Chris Herndon, tight end 16. As a, as a rookie, tight end 16, I, I love Herndon. I really do. 39 catches, 500 yards, and four scores. That's probably better than Michael Gallup did. Um, probably better than uh, Anthony Miller did, and he's a tight end on a crappy team with a rookie quarterback. If Tyler Eifert does not get re-signed by Cincinnati, is the secret out on C.J. Uzuma? <laughs> Because you could always <laughs> Is get there him. a secret? Well, I mean, you could always get him super cheap, and he'd always play all the time because Eifert was already, always assuming, hurt. Assuming that he's like, you know, that they're not bringing anybody else in. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I wonder what happens to Eifert. You know, suppose I saw him running around. You know, but I saw him doing the thing where he's chopping his feet and jumping all over the yeah. place. Just like, every, just like every year before he gets hurt. Right. Yeah. I just. He's back and injured again. <laughs> Tight end 54 last year, Dave. For <laughs> Tyler Eifert, 15 catches, 179 yards. Um, what about these rookies uh, last year? Uh, you know, we always talk about rookie tight ends sort of struggling their first year. You know, Mark Andrews finished at tight end 18. Dallas Goddard finished at uh, tight end 20. You had, who are the other guys last year? Um, Hunter Hurst Helmsley, uh, Hayden Hurst, tight end 57. And who's the uh, Baltimore, by the way, just re-signed their blocking tight end. Oh, yeah, Nick Boyle. $10 million. A three-year deal, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and so then Mike Gesicki, like, tight end, 40 seconds. They Go ahead. Mark Andrews, and they have Hayden Hurst Henry, right. whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, Her- Hayden Hurst. The, the, uh, Hunt, I was thinking like, Hunter Hurst Hems- Helmsley like, from WWE. Like 30 years old, trip, double H. Yeah, double Hayden, H. That's funny. Hayden Hurst. You know what? He, he'll hey, hope he breaks me, up because I, I was hoping he was going to be good. Do you know what triple in the in the wrestling world, do you know what Triple H's finishing move is? I'm not making this up. Do you know what his finishing move is? What's what the, it's called? The hemorrhoid? I don't know. It's called the pedigree. Really? Yeah. Something that that uh, Hearst was and uh, not living up to it. Yeah, Mark Andrews did pretty well actually, didn't he? In his stud. Didn't we talk about Mark Andrews being like a combine darling last year? Like put up insane metrics and oh my god, once he really? yeah, and right. and then they took Hearst and then they took Andrews again right away. How pissed off would you be if you were a Ravens fan? You they went back to back tight ends in the second and third rounds. Was that where Andrews went in the? Th- I think so. Second I and third. It was the fourth. Dude, I thought no. Hearst was in the first at the pick twenty five. Oh god, he was a first round pick. I'm- I thought he was a Holy first Holy hell. Pick. Then I'm even more pissed off. I'm guessing off. pick 25, and I thought Andrews was a fourth rounder. Uh, you know, I, I think that then you, what you look at is that they probably had Andrews rated pretty closely to Hurst, and they were all mad because he didn't go in the second, and they didn't yeah. go in the third, and they're like, damn it, we're taking him in the fourth. We don't care. Right. And by the way, the Gronk Hernandez double tight end thing did work out pretty well until Hernandez happened to kill somebody. Uh, Hayden. No, we're going after this. Hayden Hurst was the 25th overall pick last Ooh, year. Ooh, all right, another another lucky guess. Mark Andrews, the 86th overall pick third. in round three. Oh, third. Yeah, oh, yeah later. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, and sandwiched in between them, you guessed it, Lamar Jackson. We all knew that was coming. Um, okay. Uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins in Arizona under Cliff Kingsbury passing offense. Is there hope there? That's Wasp guy chiming in. Wants to know about ASJ, who by the way finished last year as the tight end non-existent on my sheet. Oh, uh, he didn't he get hurt right away? Uh yeah, he was out most of the year. Yeah, so he didn't he didn't register on my sheet of the top 60. Um I don't know. I mean I'll believe it when I see it, I guess. Uh ASJ, let's see where he's going right now in 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 FFPC drafts. I mean, you could get him fairly cheap. 22-12. I mean, sure, why not? Take a chance on him there. He's a tight end. Um, I, I, he's probably got more upside than any of the other tight ends going. Which, by the way, just seeing this now, CJ Uzuma, the twenty three twelve ADP, Dave, I'm I'm all over that. Yeah, that is pretty cheap. Didn't uh, I'm sorry, I thought I you thought, thought what? I, I thought that Arizona just picked up. Yeah, they just tendered Ricky Seals Jones five hours ago. The Cardinals did. Ricky Seals Jones is another guy we should talk about because he was a sleeper coming into last season. He's not going until the he's going uh, he's not going in drafts until the twenty first round uh, right now, and he finished his tight end twenty six last year. Dave, see, I said I, you know Seals Jones has not done well, never has done well, but I think with Kingsbury, if he's their tender tight end, and he's the starter. I think that then sure, why not? Did Seals Jones go to Texas Tech or did he go to A and M? How the hell do I know? Well, I'm just crap? saying because Cliff Kingsbury, a co- taught. I was going to say taught. He taught it. Texas Tech. 
he coached at Texas Tech. I don't know if he ever coached Seals Jones there. I, I know he went somewhere in Texas. It was either Texas Tech or Texas A&M. And he played wide receiver there, by the way. And then he got shifted to tight end once he got to the pros. So this is a guy that's very well versed in playing in a wide open scheme. Oh, yeah, A&M. A&M. So there you go. All right. Well, not a ton there, but at least Cliff Kingsbury knows him. I don't really have much else to report here on how the tight ends finished. Uh, Dave, um, Ben Watson, tight end 21. He's gone. He retired. Cameron Bray, tight end 19. I don't know if you have a good read on how Arians is going to use O.J. Howard and Cameron Bray. No? Have to see how that goes. I would, you know, I think you favor Howard for sure. You don't like Jack Doyle, tight end 33. Um, you like Gerald Everett coming in in this season? I think there's too many weapons there unless Gurley is in trouble, in which case I'm going to be crying in my sleep because no one takes my trade offers, so I don't really care. <laughs> Nick Boyle, tight end. Gurley, I still want him on four teams. Nick Boyle, tight end 44. Um, blocking tight end. Nick Boyle? Yes, Nick Boyle. Sounds like uh, a British guy. Never draft a British guy. If it was British, it would be Nicholas Boyle. Whatever. Yeah, I'm just telling you that's how it would work. Sir Nicholas Boyle. Sir Nicholas Boyle, playing tight end for the Baltimore Football Ravens. Uh, that's going to do it for our show tonight. Once the British accents get uh, busted out, we have to end the show. That is uh, contractually obligated. I want to thank uh, Dave Gerzak, the FFPC, Rob Rice, and, of course, each and every one of you for tuning in and listening tonight. Great uh, turnout in the chat room, guys. Really appreciate it. Check out Chris Hart and Toby Bielkini on the High Stakes Lowdown, rotoviz.com slash podcast. Dynasty Orphan Startups and Best Ball Leagues, all available at myffpc.com. Check that out. And, uh, of course, uh, check us out on Spotify. Good uh, good news on that front. Um, and uh, the Quan Edge uh, Best Ball Podcast will be out later next week. I'll uh, promote that so you guys can give that a listen. Todd does a great job there. Uh, with that, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Your weekend this starts This has been now. another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by myffpc.com that was broadcast live and heard around the world. Eric and Dave will be back next week with more analysis, Hi. interviews, and advice from a guest much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. We're on the team explore, even more so if we on tour. Me and E explore the country, wondering about the evening before. Trying to explain where the time went. Well, other rappers find a studio to grind in. You know what's ticking me off right now, Dave, is there was something I wanted to say at the end of the show and I totally forgot what it was. And it was somewhat important, too. Like, and oh, i got to remember to say this at the end of the show. And yeah. I, I can't remember. I you just don't remember? I have no idea what it was. I, we got into this tight end discussion, and I totally forgot. Yeah, whatever. It's probably complete garbage. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was a very crucial point. You can bring it up next week. I'll try to bring it up next. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was, Dave. Next week. Oh, see. Season, <laughs> season 7 finale. We've We've been doing this for this long? Yes. Um, So we put a bow on season seven. My wife hasn't lost me yet. It's so nice. And do you know what what that means? Happy birthday to Kathy tomorrow, by the way, is my wife. Oh, your wife's birthday is tomorrow? Happy birthday. Um, you know what Plus, that, by the way, let me interrupt you. Okay. It might snow over the weekend. We were supposed to go to the mother-in-law oh, God, on Sunday. Yeah, I saw that. So, hey, oh my God, it's going to be so sad that I might not be able to make it out to her house. Yeah. That, anyway, go ahead. Real tragedy. Um, season seven family, you know what that means next week? I got five on it. Get totaled up okay. live on the show All next right. week. I hope to win eight bucks. And, uh, how would you win eight? I don't know. We we might a few ties in there. We said we laid some odds, I think. All there. right. Well, what, whatever it may be, it'll be. Yeah, uh, Sweetie Birds on, on TV. It was hilarious. <laughs> it will be next week for the season seven finale. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> See,